What is up my bodyweight warriors and welcome back to starting calisthenics. Today we're going to be talking about the dip which is another one of those foundational pushing movement patterns. It's another essential movement that's going to help build up that pushing strength and it's going to transfer over to things like the planche and the handstand push-ups later on in training. And there is a bunch of progressions from beginner to advanced where this move is useful and you might say essential. It is a vertical pushing movement, which means it's gonna be in that vertical pushing slot in the Bodyweight Warrior ebook, which you can grab in the description down below for free. It also shares this space with the handstand pushup, which we will mention in later videos, because it targets some of the same muscle groups and also has some transfer over in strength. It's gonna focus primarily on the chest, delts, and triceps, although it is more delt and tricep heavy than say the pushup. Before we jump into the progressions, let's cover some form do's and don'ts when it comes to the dip. The most common mistake that I see when people performing the dip is that they favor quantity over quality. They either do very, very quick repetitions and there's not much time under tension, or they use half reps and they don't lock out or they don't go deep enough at the bottom. Whilst it's cool to say you can do 20 half rep dips, it would be better to do say 10 in a more controlled and full range of motion manner to get the optimal results. So what I'd recommend to you is primarily using that full range of motion. That means going up to a complete lock off on each rep. Next would be to slow down the tempo slightly and use a two, one, X, one tempo, which means you're gonna use a two second negative and an explosive concentric. So we get the most about time under tension and also recruiting motor units. The next common mistake that I see is the shoulder rounding in the bottom position of the dip. This usually comes from poor shoulder extension mobility. So when I say in the previous comment about using full range of motion, this is the range of motion that you have available to you. There's no point going deeper than you can control because when your shoulder rounds, it's gonna put you in a position that can compromise your shoulder and may lead to an injury. Instead, we wanna focus on keeping our shoulder blades active and retracted in that bottom position and we just use the range of motion that we have. Right, let's jump onto the the progressions working from complete beginner can't do a dip to advanced trainee for all of these progressions you want to perform around 8 to 12 repetitions before you move on to the next one first of all let's look at the support position this is an essential starting and finishing position for the dip if you can't do a dip or if you haven't done a dip before i would say it's a great position to get comfortable with and strong in so you can give yourself a solid foundation before doing the full dip we're going to start on top of the parallel bars the first cue that i would mention is we want to push hard away from the bars. This way we're gonna put our scapula into depression and be active in those shoulders. Speaking of the scapula, we also wanna make sure that it's in a slight protracted, which is when the shoulder blades come apart, position. Next, we wanna make sure that the shoulders are externally rotated. And to do this, we just wanna think about screwing those elbows into our sides and making those elbow pits face more forwards rather than facing each other. Speaking of the elbows, we also wanna make sure that we have an active lockout in the elbows. This means we don't wanna have the elbows bent, but we also don't wanna be just resting on the joint. We wanna make sure we're using both the bicep and the tricep actively to stabilize that elbow joint. And that is the support hold. This is a foundational position, and I would recommend holding it for time and getting comfortable with this position. Next, we move on to assisted progression. So this is for people who can't quite do a dip yet and want to build up that strength. One option, if you don't feel that you do have the strength for the dip, is to actually go back and just build up more pushing strength by using a simpler progression like the push-up. The first progression is going to be a tricep dip. And this is when we're gonna be using our feet out in front of us in a piked position, and we're gonna have a surface to elevate our hands so that we can perform a dipping motion. All the same form cues as before are going to apply here. However, this exercise is gonna be significantly easier because we're just reducing our body weight and therefore load on the exercise. It's also gonna have more focus on the triceps. The higher the elevation of our hands, the easier this exercise is gonna be, and the closer we bring those hands down to the level of our feet, the harder it's gonna be. Once you get down to that position, you can also add weight to this exercise on your lap to make it harder. Although I'd say you're probably better off moving on to another progression. The next progression is the band assisted dip. So once we get a little bit more comfortable with that tricep dip, we can start performing the actual dip itself and using a band to decrease the resistance that was being placed on us. The heavier the band, obviously the easier this is going to be. So the easiest way to progress this is by reducing the strength of the band being used, starting from heavy to light. 
This exercise is performed by placing the band underneath your hands between you and the parallel bars and then placing your knees on the band. The way you can make micro adjustments to how hard this exercise is, is by changing the length of the band. The longer you make it, the less resistance you're gonna get and the harder the exercise is gonna become. If you wanna grab yourself some resistance bands, I would recommend I do sell them on my website, which I will link down below. The final assisted progression for those who cannot quite do a dip yet is dip negatives. This is when we jump up into that support position that I mentioned beforehand and then perform a slow and negative dip all the way down to the bottom before then repeating that movement. This is a great way to overload the movement because you're 120% stronger in a negative or eccentric than you are in the positive or concentric. The one thing to note with this exercise is we wanna make sure that we haven't got too much of a disparity between where our feet can touch the ground and the bottom of our dip position because when we get to the bottom of that negative, we wanna make sure that we can take the weight off with our feet and if you can't touch the ground, then this is just gonna be a dodgy position. You're gonna be left dangling. You're gonna to want to perform this one from anywhere between three to six reps with a four to eight second negative. The lower the reps are, generally speaking, the longer you want to make that negative movement. Once we've got that dip, we can talk about the next progression, which is body position and body angle. A standard dip is performed on a parallel bars with a neutral straight body line and a relatively neutral up and down plane of motion. One option to make this exercise harder is to increase the forward lean of the shoulders. So that is that we put the shoulders beyond the hands. This is gonna place more load on the shoulders and the triceps and make this exercise considerably harder. It might also have some more transfer over to the planche. The further forward you lean, the harder this exercise becomes. The next way we can change the intensity of this exercise is by adopting a piked position of the hips. When we pike the hips, we're gonna actually place more load onto the chest and it's gonna also make this exercise harder to perform. This can start with just a small pike, but eventually can be made into a full L-sit dip. Next progression we need to talk about is hand placement. The traditional dip is done on parallel bars, which means our hands are gonna be in a neutral position. However, you can also perform the dip on a straight bar, which means our hand's gonna be in a pronated position. Much of the same form cues apply. The only difference here is that you now have a bar in the way, which is gonna affect the range of motion that you can get slightly. Also, because of the nature of how this exercise is, you're gonna be adopting more of that piked body position, which means there'll be a little bit more of a chest focus. You can perform dips on a straight bar in both a pronated and supinated position. The final hand placement is not really a hand placement, but rather an elbow or upper arm placement, and that is the Russian dip. This is a fantastic progression for those who are looking to gain their first muscle up because it really helps to teach the speed of that transition. Here at the bottom of a dip, instead of just going back up, you're gonna drop back onto your upper arms, and then you have to use both strength and momentum to learn to throw your shoulders forward, back into that bottom dip position, and get back up. Finally, we move on to additional equipment. The most obvious and my favorite here would be the weighted dip. I think this exercise is absolute gold, especially to advanced trainees because it allows you to overload this pushing pattern very, very easily and build up a pretty damn solid strength in the delts, chest and triceps. It can be done very simply by just hanging a weight on a weight belt in between your legs or wearing a weight vest. Next, I'd like to mention the use of rings. Although when we're using the rings in this position, there is quite a lot of stability that is required, which means you wanna be relatively good on the rings before trying the ring dips. I'd recommend maybe starting with some ring push-ups first. We can use pretty much any of the previous progressions mentioned and apply it to the rings. The support hold, I would say, is probably one of the most important to nail before doing anything on the rings in the future because it gives you a good stability in that position. The main thing that would change here is with that form cue of external rotation in the support, this means we're gonna end up in a rings turned out position. What I'll do is I'll link down below to a more in detail ring support tutorial to give you more information on this. From here though, we can perform standard dips and we can also perform a few other variations such as Bulgarian dips, which is when we use a wide grip dip to further intensify the movement. But that is basically it. That is all the progressions for the dips that you can do to get you from zero to hero. Whether you're a beginner or an advanced trainer, there's something in here that is applicable and useful in your training. That being said, you can grab the free Bodyweight Warrior ebook with all those programs in the description down below. While you're down there, if you do have any questions about today's tutorial, why not leave a comment in the comment section down below. Join the conversation, let me know your thoughts. You can also hit that thumbs up button and support the channel. Right next to it is that subscribe button. Make sure you don't miss out on any more of these starting calisthenics series. But that has been it for this week, guys. Have a strong week and peace.